All right, so um, I just want to talk about my my intensive courses for a second. Um, I'm gonna keep doing them for, of course. Um, I had like a ton of them that I had filmed that I hadn't, e I, I either hadn't uploaded or I hadn't publicized them yet. So everything that I've had, this is today. Today is April second, and I have basically uploaded and publicized, put and edited and everything, and put it out. And it's all publicized. Everything that I have filmed of the few courses, um, the, there's two courses that I filmed a good amount in, and two of them that I have um, introduced but haven't really started. So everything that I have made of the intensive courses are finally out, and I've made a lot since January that I hadn't publicized or I hadn't um, uploaded. So everything that I have, that I have made is publicized and ready for you to watch. However, my outlines are not up on my blog site yet. That's the only thing. So I apologize for that. And um, sometimes things take me longer, especially if, I, especially if there's a longer video. Like my priest, my in my intro to, to philosophy course, my priest credits one I filmed on January 5th, and it's, it's April 2nd right now. So I, longer videos take me, I don't know, for some, for some reason, take me longer to edit and publish. I don't know why, but I want to kind of make things better with that and stop you know stop putting things off and stop stop taking so long to get stuff out so because I, I have three days off now this this is my first out of three days off I plan on doing a good, good amount of videos including in those courses so I plan on trying to do things better and trying to get things out better but this video is about is you know one of my probably this is my third video about the pre-scratic so I did a video I did a whole intensive course about, about the priest practice now I want to kind of break it do videos just like regular videos about each of the priest practice thinkers so in this one I want to talk about Heraclitus which is a huge one big huge one um, basically Heraclitus was one of the bigger thinkers um, Heraclitus and, Par and Parmenides are normally what I think of when I think of the priest practice um, and basically I guess is a good place to if you don't have like a ancient philosophy book or whatever, this is a good good place to go. Uh, this the, the great the great conversation. I think it's a great book to even look about look at, to read about the pre Socratics too, among many other thinkers. So there's that. With Heraclitus, there's two big things, two big themes. There's fire and logos, and then there's the and then there's opposition. So a few few kind of pieces we have a few pieces of his thought and a couple of quotes that I have written down for this is one of them is that all things come into being through opposition and are all in flux like a, like a river so and Plato said to, to Heraclitus you can't step in you, you can't step twice in the same river um, and as to how that is and as to how those things are important is because Heraclitus thought that everything was in a unified fashion the world is all one and yet it's all in a lot of different working parts and everything up and, and everything comes comes into being through opposition and everything occurs through opposition and conflict um, and that's how things that's, that's how the world is and in a different video I kind of want to expand on that and talk about how that's almost something like what Derrida would say or possibly even Foucault. Um, that's you know, so I'd, I'd say that Heraclitus' thought is even like way, way more advanced than his time. I mean, I think that that's something that can be expanded upon and thought about more. And f different philosophers have done that, but I kind of want to think about that in, di in a different video. <laughs> Heraclitus talked about the oneness of things and how opposition there's a, there is oneness. There is a monism about the world, about the about the metaphysics, about the metaphysics of the world. Um, however, among that oneness, there is opposition, and that's how things are. That's the way that things come to be. There's chaos, and there is opposition along the oneness. Um, so, the, one of the things that he talks about is fire. Now, it's not like Thales. How Thales talked about water as a substantial metaphysics. It's not. It's not. It's not like that. It's fire, not as as an opposition to water, it's not like he's talking about the elements as, as sort of a Confucian think as a sort of a Confucian thinker would. 
I'm talking about fire, but as a sort of a war, a war of order. This is kind of a difficult concept to sort of get down, uh, because you know you get to really think about Her th think about Heraclitus and take up your own in your own interpretation and not be and not, and not be wrong. So, I mean, fire, I guess, is is interpreted as a sort of natural world order of things, um, and of which is universal and it is divine. So there is some sort of a div uh, sort of a godly aspect in this. A certain world order. Sorry, <laughs> hit the table with my hand there by accident. Sorry. Um, there is a universal divine world order of things, and that's the way that fire is talked about. And if you look at his quotes, and you can kind of try to try to think about it and try to pin that concept down further, that's kind of a diff one of one of the more difficult things of his of of Heraclitus' thought. Um, secondly, among the few things is Logos. Logos is a big one and a little bit more easy to, to, to pin down. Logos is words that a speaker says, but it's it's discourse. It's sort of like logic. L the word logic comes from Logos. Logos is a sort of pattern of things. Uh, the world has a typical pattern or, stru or structure that's, that is what a logic I guess could be thought of as um, pretty much logos is the way by which all things come into being. Also, so logos and opposition and fire; those are these all things. How things are one and how things are opposed and chaotic. Yet that's these things are how all things come. In, all things are and how all things come come into being. Um, so there's a very interesting dynamic of Heraclitus' thought because of the concept of chaos and opposition and conflict. Um, how there is still, it's sort of contradictory because there's, a, there's chaos and conflict and opposition on the one, on one side of the token, however, on the other, the other, the other side, there is a logos, there is a pattern, there's a typical, stru there's a, there's a typical st structure of the world that, um, which, you know, is a part of its oneness, and everything is one in everything. However, the two kind of have this sort of contradictory concepts. However, everything still works, still works, still works together. So I kind of want to talk about that and talk, talk about Derrida a little bit too with that. Um, so let me know if I should have included anything or talked about something a little, a little more in this. Um, let me know what your thought are or what, what your thought is. If you have any, if you have anything interesting to say about. Heraclitus or, or something you've heard about him or read about him. So, 